Hmm. Okay. So hmm. we're back again, and we are going to start uh, capturing the northbound API usage. Uh, so Brent, you want to start saying anything about it? Hmm. Well, it's, it's now 4 a.m. <laughs> and we're on our third and fourth video, but uh, no, so we're just gonna kind of go through northbound stuff. Uh, it'll it'll may not be as much code, but mainly for how to kind of run tests. So if you're hacking on code and you need to, you know, test it or get it to do something or even just provision, uh, this will. The man's gonna show us right now. All right, oh, you let's, boss. <laughs> let's get started then. All right, screen share. Okay. So, share desktop, share screen, and there we go. All right. Um, yeah. So we've been talking a lot about uh, the the code in the past two videos, and now we assume that hey, you, you, you become the code expert now, and uh, we are going to share some of the way that we test our outbound APIs and how outbound API testing helps us also test the the base code. Uh, so for that, we are going to showcase the, some basic uh, Northbound APIs that we have today using the add bridge domain context service and uh, add port and hooking up ports using Mininet. And how, as a developer, you can uh, implement your own uh, APIs and test it out end to end. Uh, in order to do that, uh, I have a running controller with OVSDB running on this one um, already. And uh, I have Mininet running with uh, instance two switches. Uh, also, I have this Mininet manager set up to uh, 640 passive listening mode. And uh, going back to the controller, uh, the controller is running with the two switches. As you note, there is the the node IDs are represented here, not the names, because the OSDB connection is not done yet. It is purely open flow so far. So the first step uh, of starting the way I do testing is using Northbound API is to use the Connection Manager API and connect to a given uh, OVSDB server. So as we explained in the previous videos, it can be two ways to connect to the OVSDB server. It can be either passive connection as we have currently in the OVSDB where the server listens to the connections from the controller or an active connection from the OVSDB server using a set manager uh, TCP. Uh, in fact, I can type the command right here just as uh, just as for completion. Okay, so if you do a set manager TCP 192.168.56.1 colon 6640. Uh, the moment I do this one, it is going to connect to the controller rather than be connecting from there. But for the sake of this video, I'm not going to do this one. I'm going to still be in the passive connection so that we can use the Northbound API of the connection manager and connect to the server. That said, I'm connecting and uh, this connected and uh, the status is 200 OK. Uh, and we got the return type saying the node type is OVS and node ID is host one. Now you know that the connection is established. I'm and don't expect you guys. Meaningful uh, name. Sorry, uh, Brent. Uh, sorry, just the, the the host one is a meaningful name as far as the identifier. Right, right. A good point. So this host one here is user defined and it's your own. Yeah. It can be anything that uh, you want it to be. And uh, and OpenStack, we believe it's going to be a node ID, which is going to be a UID, a big string, not a user readable host one right here. Right, right. <laughs> and then, uh, so the, and just to throw in, just for anybody that didn't catch, there's uh, the Open Daylight OVSDB developer getting started video has got how to get this environment set up. So if you haven't seen that and you're wondering about Postman, the, what he's, what Madhu's using here, just check that video out. Right, right. And uh, we have this exported and everybody can start using the imported uh, URLs rather than typing everything from scratch here. So we are making it easy for you guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so also we have this get API where the connection manager get the API to send. You'll get all the nodes that the connection manager handles. 
as you can see, it is handling both OpenFlow and OBS. So you see the OpenFlow connections and also the OBS connection right here. Uh, now, once a connection is established, uh, let's go back to this uh, the controller and do a refresh. Uh, okay, you, you see that the node name has been learned. Unfortunately, it's not updated here. It will be updated uh, soon. Uh, when I do it, you will start seeing it. Uh, now, I'm going to create a bridge called the BR1. Uh, for this, I'm using this network config bridge domain configuration service, which we saw in the previous uh, walkthroughs, code walkthroughs. So all I'm going to do is do a post on this node, OVS host1, and a uh, bridge named BR1. Now, before doing that, I want to just showcase that the mininet is running with S1 and S2, right here. The mininet is created S1 and S2. I'm playing with the OVS commands on the back end, which is mininet runs on top of OVS. So I'm just using the OBS commands to look at all the switches. So you see S1 and S2 here. No, there's no, no other switches or bridges. Now I'm going to do the BR1 creation. Do a send. It's created and you see 201 created right here. Uh, when I go back to the mini net, you'll see BR1 is created. The controller is configured automatically. And also we create the the default ports and interfaces with internal everything set automatically for you. All you do is to creating the bridge using onboard API. As simple as that. Now when I go back to the controller UI, refresh, you see that there's a few bugs here. You should have learned the name automatically, but there's a few bugs to get fixed automatically. As you refresh, it'll get fixed. See, this is BR1 is right here. So we created the bridge. It's part of the uh, open flow as well. Now let's go back and do some more Postman commands. Like I go here and create bridge two. It's created. Now let's go here, make sure it's created. BR1, yes, it's created. BR2 is created. It's perfect. Now the interesting part is to creating the port. Now, um, uh, creating a port is interesting because uh, you can create a port without attaching to a neighboring neighboring switch. We can create it, uh, but uh, unfortunately, uh, being a developer, you'd be excited to know that not all the network service functions that we have today, uh, all the configuration service are implemented yet. So we've implemented the creating a bridge and creating a port, but we don't have the update uh, bridge config and update port config implemented yet. Just just showcase and we go back to the code and show exactly what is not implemented so that it gives opportunity for you as a developer to contribute back to the open source community. Now this add port is implemented. This is the create bridge above is implemented. What is not implemented is right here. Set manager, I think, is implemented as well. Good. Uh, there you go. Great port is implemented. There you go. Right. Now, the add bridge port, conf bridge domain config, and add port config is not implemented yet. And anybody interested want to contribute can contribute to these two functions. The reason I'm telling you right now is because when you go to this add port uh, configuration right here, the post for the port. We also pass this config right here. So essentially what we are doing here is we are creating this port called br one v one in, in the bridge BR1. Also saying while creating this a peer called br 2 v one even though it's not existing yet, right? So mm -hmm. we are just creating a port, also configuring the port right in the same uh, create port configuration without even the peer available yet. And to note that this particular post command as a HTTP data, the uh, HTTP body, which is of, it takes in a type and a custom here, right? All these are implemented inside the, uh, the map config right here. 
Let me go back to this add port command, which will be much makes much more clearer. There you go. The add port is the one which you can finally get called after all the northbound traversal as we explained in the previous uh, getting started video. The node is the node being passed, bridge identifier is the BR1 in the in our case, port identifier is the BR1 ETH1. And whatever you see as the config here is basically a name value pair of a config constant and the object value. It is actually being passed as the raw HTTP body for the post command right here. So it's name value, type patch, another name value, custom and an object here. So when you say custom here, what it means is you can pass in anything you want to and interpret the way you want to on the on the on the config service side. So to explain here, the custom that is passed here, you pass a peer and br2, b1 is essentially what we are doing here is if the type is patch we'll use the custom value as the options field in the interface. So is that when you go to this add port and let me scroll down a bit and there you go. First of all we get the type, the custom config type. Let me, let me expand this a bit so that you can see better. Yeah. So we get the type of the command, which is the, which is the config type, and we take the custom type and use the custom one and add as an options field. And that options field is used, uh, is set uh, inside the interface row right here. So now, when you look at the OVSDB uh, commands, uh, you will see if you want to do a patch between two different ports of two different devices, we actually pass this peer type br 2 v one as part of the options field of the interface. That's exactly what you're doing here. With that done, do a send. It is going to create br one v one on bridge br one Let's go back here. Which VR1 doesn't have that port yet. Now when I do a show command again, you see that VR1 V1 is created with the patch type and options is peer BR2 V1, even though it's not available yet. Let's go back and see here. It's not available yet. Now, as a good citizen, let me go back <laughs> and create that patch that we are looking for on the BR2 guy. Go there and do a send. Now I created BR2 V1. This time my patch is pointing back to the BR1 V1. Let's go back. It's not there before. Do a show. You see that it's created and patched. Now when I go to the nice UI of the controller, do a refresh. You see this voila. We created BR1 and BR2, and the patch has been established right here. Perfect. Now, nice. with this one, we have showcased that we create the, we connect to the the OSDB server. We can do the uh, uh, configure bridges, and we can connect the ports as well. Quickly, just to showcase that we can also manipulate the Mininet uh, setup. I, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to just going to just play around a bit. I'm going to br1 quickly and also create another port, and I'm going to pair with uh, the existing switch one s1. Create it. It's created. I'm going to br2. I'm creating this port as well. Now, interestingly, I can go and delete an existing port. So whatever you're seeing. Here between S1 and S2, after I press this button, it will go away because I'm deleting a port. It's deleted. It's also delete the other side. It's to and fro. So now I deleted the existing connection and connected the new switches 
to the old ones. So if I do a refresh here, it's gone. But unfortunately, ah, okay. This this port is not set up because we haven't created the patch port on S1 and S2 yet. For example, here BR1 says that hey, I'm connected to S1 v3, but S1 we haven't created the S1 v3 port yet. Now let me go back here to my trustworthy postman and let's create this patch port on the S1. Also on S2. The moment I create these two, go back, refresh, there you go. Now we change the topology, originally set up by Mininet, as if we are using the Northbound API and creating our own Mininet, right? Because we are creating bridges, we are deleting ports, creating links, so on and so forth. So that kind of covers all the operations that we can do today using the Northbound uh, network config bridge domain. And we also showcase that there are a lot of improvements that you can do as a developer. Please come and contribute and add these two missing functionality and uh, it'll, it'll wrap up the entire network config which domain functionality that you're supposed to expose. So Brent, with that, is there anything that you want to add here? Nope, you did a great job, man. It looks, uh, it's getting exciting, so. Excellent. All right, <laughs> All right, let me stop this broadcast then. Thank you, guys. Thanks.